And how this works is basically it's gonna sit in here. It's got a belt drive. That's what makes it really neat to a lathe, okay? It's got it going here. And this is its little mounter and its adjuster. You see the little glides and everything? So we can make little adjustments and moves with it. But that's why you always have to plan these because you know, these are the mistakes I used to make in my younger years. You know, when we press on the two pulleys, top and bottom, I gotta make sure I get this lever in here. I sure hope this method works, Lance, because I don't want to make a plate. <laughs> yeah, he's about ready to do anything but make those plates. They're not that hard to make, it's just, that means we have to make them for each size we have too, though. Right, we want to do other, right, the other chucks as well. Right, we have every size in the series, Eric, okay. Last night when I did the reassembly, I even downloaded the instructions from Albrecht on how to disassemble and reassemble the chuck. Hello and welcome back. This is Shop Adventures 21. I'm Lance. That's Patrick hiding back behind the camera. All right, let's get right to the topics because it's going to be an exciting week and we're just so glad to bring you along with us. The topics are, I finish up the Levin lathe final accessory, the micro drill. I'm going to show you the little detail of that. It's the last time you're going to see it. Uh, I'm going to move on to some other accessories Pat has for me. You will not be seeing those on film. We will just merely be sharing them in the future of the channel. Because, uh, you know, this place is like a candy store if you're a machinist and you like micro machining parts, tools, accessories, and watchmaking world and all that. I'm going to work on a lot of watch. I'm going to explain that to you. Patrick goes into great detail filming and sharing the entire micro, I'm sorry, just the entire German tapping machine. I always want to call it a micro tapping machine. That's because that's what we use it for. So anyway, let's just call it what it is. It's a German tapping machine. It's just going to do really small tapping. He's going to share you rebuilding the whole thing. He's supposed to show you running it this week. He cannot. I am so sad to report to you. Almost like one of them evening news channels, breaking news is story at 11. Okay. <laughs> It's not. What it is is Albrecht, and that's the problem. Albrecht, they've, they, they've chuck company made in Germany. We have detected an issue there. We're going to dive into that. We're taking you along with us. We hope you'll enjoy it. First of all, in how you disassemble one, as the YouTube videos share, and they're fine, by the way, as well as the instructions from the factory and so forth share about greasing and about disassembly and about using this plate system and the two-plate system. Uh, no. Nah, we found a different way, and that would be us. Uh, you know, otherwise, this tap machine would be run today. We're going to use something. Pat's going to share it with you about how to disassemble it. A little easier, a little easier to do by yourself. Um, that's what we're here for. We're not here to repeat what we have already seen. We're here to try to better what we feel is a better approach. Sometimes, and sometimes we can't. So he's going to get into that. He's going to do something really unique. He's going to take apart a brand new Albrecht Chuck, new and in the box, next to the refurbishing one we're doing from the tapping machine we've been using for a decade and a half. We think that's of how far back it goes. I hate to talk about past because then it tells me how old we're getting. <laughs> okay. So that takes care of all of that. I then uh, got a shout out today to a dear, dear friend who I have been calling a person from the UK. Well, he's not. There is a difference. You know, there's a place called the UK and a place called Australia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, Peter. Peter, C-C-R-E-N-G is his channel. I got a link down below to him and a link to our brand new and first ever channel sticker we didn't have to pay to get. This is a free channel sticker, came in the mail as a surprise from Tom at Hilltop Machine Works. Let's take a look at that. There's our first channel sticker from a co-creator from creators of YouTube uh, videos, so we just love it. And, uh, and we're happy to have it. So we're happy to be friends with Tom there. And we just love the uniqueness of his building, by the way. It looks like a bunker. And I kind of think it's just an awesome place to work. Okay. That takes care of that. And again, we're sorry, Peter. You are located in Australia. In a fine place, it is. <laughs> okay. Okay, everything's serious. Serious as I can get. And I've been having a little problem with my collar lately. They come, come out a little bit. I did a video the other day. It was a white coat, I believe. Yeah, and you haven't been very dapper lately. Just, so, we wanted to bring out our friend Damper Dam. He's our training model to help us with our proper uniform here at Active Adam. <laughs> he teaches you how to tie your shoes. He's circa 1960s, early 1970s for children on how to properly tie their shoes, properly button the coat, and of course there's a fine zipper for his pantalones. <laughs> 
Okay, and I don't believe he has anything to do with the hair. I think that that's pretty much a lost cause. And yeah. So anyway, that's Damper Dan. Damper Dan is a training model, and we do have uh, two of him in inventory <laughs> currently. Okay, so I just wanted to share that very unserious moment with you, and thank you, and let's get out in the shop, and let's find out how well Pat knows how to rebuild a tapping machine. Thank you. Okay, we're out in the machine shop, and Lance has some great news to share today. Oh, hello. Hi. Yep, I, you probably get tired of having to see me filmed at the exact same spot every week. Well, the good news is even better news for me. This is the last attachment for the Levin series of, of, of accessories. This is the micro drill. You've seen it a little bit in video with us. Um, the, the difference is today, what I just want to share is this, this one, this is the uh, spindle for the micro drill. This is its little collet. It's just going large there, like I always say. See? Okay. Yeah, I got it. And my little drawbar, you know. Wait, don't, don't move. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And the way it works is, oh, by the way, this isn't the only attachment Levin says sells that has this uh, 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 this particular spindle type. They actually have the uh, the milling attachment and the drill press attachment. Is that right, Patrick? And the grinding attachment. Oh, the grinding attachment. That one's, yeah. Okay, got it. And how this works is it basically it's going to sit in here. It's got a belt drive. That's what makes it really neat to a lathe, okay? It's got it going here. And this is its little mounter and its adjuster. You see the little glides and everything? So we can make little adjustments and moves with it. Um, it's really going to be neat. It spins counterclockwise, as we've said, to the spindles. It's going to be awesome. It's going to make perfect drilled holes. Okay, that's that. It also has... The, ours has a Michitoya. Um Okay, and that's fine. Um, Patrick, is, there's two other brands that, that Eleven also does offer, so you'll see these these drill attachments with two other models, actually. Yeah, I really think it depended on the on the year they are making these uh, attachments, but we've seen um, from Federal and Sterrett as well. Oh, yeah. Sterrett. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Um... Let's see. Okay, I, 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 the, I got a little exciting news though. I know, I know, I would get tired of watching this this guy sitting here at this desk, always polishing and cleaning these little tools. Well, I got something kind of neat because this is my last eleven. Say bye bye, bye bye eleven. Okay, I got two Marshalls. Um, they're kind of neat, right? They're, I'm gonna, right, Patrick? They're gonna be uh, yeah, the cross slides. They're cross slides, so I get to do those. And that's, that's, but I'm not going to film that. That's just something I'm doing for Patrick. And he might stop by for a photo or something. Sure, a quick little. But I'm doing it. I work all day. So, you know, we work all day around here because that's all we do. But in the evenings, this is where I come to play or what I call therapy. And then I turn the music on and the heater's going. And I'm going to start doing some of these, you know, there, there's some really neat, significant vintage watch maker tooling and tools that we have. And they have real historic uh, prominence that I really would like to share. Before they can be shared, a lot like what you see us doing now, getting all this stuff prepared because of YouTube and all the pretty pictures. I'm going to restore these tools by refurbishing them out here a little bit. Right, Patrick? That's right. And then we're going to share them with you along the way. One now, one over here. Just a little bit to share. You know, our background is, is, is making watchmaker parts and doing watch repair services and stuff like that, making vintage vintage little repair parts that aren't made anymore. So so it's neat to see some of these. We don't really use any of these tools, not a lot of them, but they're the prominent historic references of what the watchmaker industry was and how it is coming forward to today. So I want to share that with you, and I, I hope you'll join us for that part of the journey. Is that all I have, Patrick? Yeah, I just want to add, you uh -oh. know, we do, no, we do have a lot of the older tools that were used in horology, only because it's really good to know how certain methods were used in the past. Yeah, the references are, are priceless. Yeah, because, you know, although a lot of things that have become outdated in today's standards, you know, some of the things that were done in the past can still be applied. So it's really good to know, you know, you, you can always learn new things, you know, new procedures. Can I add one more thing before you guys leave me? Oh, sure. Please. You know, this spindle isn't staying here. I forgot to mention it. All right. I've got to take this back into the workshop. You know, oh, by the way, blue coat. You know, I'm more comfortable in the blue coat. I know you saw me in the white coat the other day. I'm going to rant and rave a little bit. It's just not me. <laughs> and a couple of people commented 
They thought I'd gone over to the white side. Well, I didn't. I'm a blue coat, blue collar guy. This spindle isn't here to stay with me. I'll get it later and I might have to do a little bit of work on it, but everything else will be done and waiting for it here on the micro drill. This spindle is one of the three spindles Patrick's going to be working on the rebuilding of. This is the spindle he's rebuilding and he's doing two headstock spindles for those 11 lays. He's doing all that in the educational series. Is that correct, Patrick? That's correct. And uh, remember, it's important to know that this has the same precision as the headstocks. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is total indicator run out of 50 millionths. So it's pretty, pretty tight. Um, these are going to be fabulous. I hope you'll join the video. It is going to be lengthy. It's educational now. So it is a step-by-step -step detail. But you know, it, uh, it's a spindle is a spindle, but it is a critical small spindle. It will be a lot of fun to watch. We'll make sure it's fun. We'll have a little bit of fun along the way, shall we? Thanks again. Bye. Great. Thank you. Oh, look. There's been some movement and activity out in the workshop area. It probably is a good time to check in with Mr. Patrick. Hello, Patrick. I see some big cameras sitting here, and what do we have to share? Yes. Hi, guys. Yes, today's a good day because today I plan to assemble the tapping machine finally. Okay. And as Lance showed you, I also have a camera going, or will be going, because uh, I'm going to share that. I'm going to run it through, and I'll do um, a time lapse uh, just showing you, you know, the assembly process, because those are always fun to watch. And just to give you an idea, this is my uh, plan of attack or, you know, my plan for assembling this. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is, okay, this is the part you've seen in a couple of our prior videos. Okay. Okay, this is the one where the bearing nuts we made, you know, where the bearings are pressed on here. And then you got the bearing nuts that secure those. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this. So, we first got two bearings I need to press. And where these go is these get pressed into the pulleys, and you've seen these too. So I'm going to press the bearings in these pulleys first, and then they get pressed on this. So one on the top, one on the bottom. And then basically, basically from there, you know, just you'll see me, you know, different parts, the bearing covers go on. Uh, you know, we got the spindle right here. So the spindle goes through here. So you can see. Um, slides smoothly like it should and um, real quick uh, this is um, this has a little taper to it this is where the chuck the little Albrecht chuck mounts on um, which uh, I'll talk about that next but um, probably do that tomorrow oh, isn't that that's the one we had to get off of there that's the yeah that's how we got the Albrecht okay yeah we couldn't get it off and then finally the manufacturer recommended uh, for us to heat the chuck and we did, and it came off really easily. It really surprised us. So that was great news, because those can be really tough to get off. So, okay, so, yeah, so this goes on. Oh, and, you know, can't remember. That's why you always have to plan these, because, you know, these are the mistakes I used to make in my younger years. You know, when we press on the two pulleys, top and bottom, i got to make sure I get this lever in here, you know, because of... You know, and that's a, that's a typical novice mistake I would have made easily. You know, I would press the pulleys on, forget that, oh, guy, I forgot this little handle, and it, I'd have to remove one. So, so got to be sure I get this. And basically what this is, basically the handle comes off of this, and this is what controls up and, up and down motion, you know, the spindle. You'll see it in action. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see it working. Um, I think... Oh, that's so, when we do the little clutch demo and all that, huh? Yes, yeah, so we're going to show you how the whole thing works. It's really neat. I, it is, isn't it? I hope it's going to be fun. Oh, I love watching it. never gets tired, ah, you ah. know. Okay, so that's that. Um, well, and um, so that's... So this, is, this project's going to be done today. So by the end of today, this is going to be fully functional and working. Um, should. <laughs> um, tomorrow, my plan is... Um, to rebuild this Albrecht chuck, okay? And this is a one, let's see, yeah, this is the one eighth inch or three millimeter inch capacity Albrecht chuck. And as you can see, it's in really good condition. Um, here's this, if you're wondering where that little piece, that little piece goes on there. And it's really in great condition, you know, just over, over the uh, years, it's just gotten really stiff because, you know, the oils and grease or what, whatever's in there dries up and it just hardens. And it just doesn't feel, 
you know, it just doesn't feel like it should. So, and I'll come back um, tomorrow. I'll be back before I do the rebuild. You know, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about the procedure, you know, the steps that need to be taken to take it apart and so forth. Um, so that'll be a fun project. You know, again, I've never done this before. I've only read about it. So let's see how it goes. And while I'm out here, and you know, I was about ready to write up a uh, non-function order. Uh, uh, that's a red tag for this area out here in the workshop. <laughs> Because I did not see the Don Bailey uh, Suburban Tool uh, <laughs> photo back up on the wall. But now she's back in her proper location, correctly leveled, of course. Yes, finally. Uh, and, and they're nice. Yes, and you know why? Because I kept hitting it. with you know, And then you know, I set this camera up and I said, you know what? It's time to get it back on the wall. So it's back on the wall and the photos and the note from Don. Everything's behind it so we won't lose it again. So we're all set. Okay, well, thank you for the update, Patrick. See you soon. Sure, thank you. Bye.
we're getting a little excited around here. We're out to see Patrick. I guess we've got some updates on the uh, German tapping machine. Hey, Patrick. Hello, guys. Yes, we have good news. Okay, as you saw in the time lapse, uh, the assembly of this went perfect. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better assembly. Um, didn't really run into any problems. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, so it went well. I haven't tested anything. You know, we haven't done any adjustments yet. I just assembled everything. And as far as I can tell, you know, you saw me put in the new bearings um, in these three idler pulleys and also for the pull the main pulleys here and that went really well it was kind of funny I'd like to mention um, you'll notice on the video when I installed the first bearing it was for uh, the top pulley and you'll notice I was using our our SKF tool you know with the hammer and it went in so easy I decided to try installing it just by hand on the second pulley and it didn't fall in but you know I was able to push you saw it on video where I was able to push it with my fingers and it was really tight and uh, still. So that so I thought, oh wow, that's gonna be this is gonna be a really easy bearing installation. Well, that's until I came to these, and on these idler pulleys, the bearings actually inserted into the pulley itself really easy. But where I had problems is you'll notice on the video I did the first one with the SKF tool, and it, it took a lot of blow hammer blows, and I just wasn't comfortable. I mean, I finally got it all the way. But I just didn't feel comfortable doing the same method with the uh, last two. So you, you saw me disappear from the camera. And what I disappeared to is I went to the machine shop, to the hydraulic press, and did it there. Just because it's, it's, it's a lot more safer. You know, you don't get the hammer blows. It's just a nice, smooth, you know, slow process. So I did that really quick. It was about a five minute job. And then I came back and then you saw me come back in on the video and I had it all done. So that's where, that's where I disappeared to. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that, that was about it. Um, do you have any questions, Lance? Well, oh, I, well yeah, why don't you come? Can let I? me show you the front. Yeah, I just realized you're looking at the back. See, it looks really nice. Ooh, look at that fancy label, huh? Yeah, the only thing, um, uh, the paint job overall for the unit is still in pretty good condition. I mean, we don't want to repaint everything. The only thing we did do though is we powder coated this uh, front uh, cover just because it was really bad. Like most of the paint had come off, and it turned out really good. It really matches uh, with pretty good with the existing green. So that was the only thing um, uh, we did on the let's, paint let's side. Let's open the hood on that car. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, it looks, oops, let me take the hand off first. She never looked this good when uh, I had to use it all the time before we, before we took it out of service, huh? Oh, yeah, wait till you see it. It looks so... We just bought it used and put it to work. <laughs> so now it's got a new life and we're really happy about it. Well, you know what the problem was, too? See, when we bought this, the pro one of the... Well, we it had to have been the prior owner. What they did was they greased up everything. And when we spoke to the manufacturer, the manufacturer said it should you should not put grease anywhere on this thing. It should be oil only. So, and that's what kind of that was a that was another motivation to doing a full on rebuild. That would be a rebuild, right? Yeah, if you're gonna okay. do all of it. Yeah, and um, and that's what we did. We took it completely apart. Lance did the deep cleaning. Um, Lance also reblocking a lot of the existing oh. blocking parts. Ah. So you got these knobs, the, these tops, uh -huh. and if you remember, there's this, there's this main bracket that the, the handle attaches to. Okay, this was actually painted green, but it was got half the green paint was flaking off. It looked really ugly. So Lance stripped it and he blackened it, and it looks great, it, better than we thought it would look. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as you can see, I mean, and here, see here, here, and um, when we uh, when we demonstrate this thing in action, where it's actually threading, and it's all hooked up. I'll explain how this how the whole mechanism works. So that'll be you know um hopefully later in this video. The other thing you'll notice the electrical is not hooked up yet. Okay, and that's the only thing. This is the cover that goes in front of the motor plate. 
Okay, the reason why it's not hooked up is because we're still waiting on a little switch box that's going to be installed right here. And that's going to be the main uh, power with the fuse. And so that will be used to turn it off and on. So, so I'm not going to um, hook it up uh, permanently right now. But in order to demonstrate it for you guys, I'm just going to hook it up temporarily. And I'll probably do that tomorrow. And um, so, But that's why it's not hooked up right now. Okay, I don't, uh, I guess I'll ask there, I don't, uh, it's all here, I don't see a belt, can we see, how are we going to do oh. on the belt, are we going to fuse a new belt, or? Okay, what I decided to do is, this is actually our, the uh, belt we were using, this is the older belt, and I decided to just go ahead and continue using this belt, okay, this is a fabric belt, they call it an endless belt, there must they may there may be another term for it, but it's you can see there's no there's no fusing or connection. It's endless, and this I figured it's still in wonderful condition. So we're going to use this belt until it wears out, and then only once this wears out, then we'll use uh, you know our polyurethane belt where we fuse. And I'm um, here. Let me let me let me see if I can install it real quick so you can get an idea how it looks. What's nice is this is really easy to put on. Notice that he goes all the way around the motor, or all the way around the uh, spindle, and then comes back and doesn't have to go back to the motor. That's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. It's a real bizarre design. It, at first, it was a little little setback. Now it's a. Uh, so I understand. Here, when I get a good picture, okay, I'm going to turn the motor by hand. See, and as you can see, as I explained in our last week's video. You can see how the top pull and the bottom pulley are rotating in different directions. See, that's pretty neat. So when you're going on a down motion, see the down motion is causing uh, this plate to close, and that's turning uh, clockwise. And then when you pull back up, it engages the top uh, cone clutch, and that's what... Um, Causes it to turn counterclockwise. So pretty neat. And again, you know, we'll, it, it, you'll be able to see it more clearly once it's working. It's pretty neat, huh? That is really neat. Uh, it's a it's a joy to run. I bet it's going to be a lot more fun to run. It's just real smooth, and I'm sure it's going to be even better now that it's been rebuilt. It, it's going to be a lot quieter, I bet. <laughs> oh yeah. And you know, you know, it was so full of grease. Like this cavity right here, it was just filled with grease. I mean, some people. I don't know. We don't know why. Some people think more is better when it comes to grease or lubrication. And boy, this thing was just, I mean, it, it was grease everywhere. So it's going to its gonna run so much better and smoother. I mean, I could already tell. It was never this easy. Uh, see, it's really smooth right here at the main spindle. See, it was never this nice and easy. So, yeah, we're really excited to get it back up. Okay, I'm, in regards to getting it back, my project today, okay, so I'm done with the assembly. Everything went perfect. The next project is rebuilding our Albrecht drill chuck. And what I've done is, okay, if you remember, this is our 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter uh, inch capacity drill chuck. Okay. Okay, and then, so I did some research on the internet, and I found a really good article um, called machinistblog.com. And this guy wrote a really good article, Rebuilding an Albrecht Drill Chuck. Okay, and it's really nice. I won't go through it, but um, if you go here, maybe I will add a link to it in our um, YouTube description. And what's really nice about it is he goes through and, um, you know, he goes, you know, here's like, he shows all the parts. Oops. She explains all the parts uh, that's contained within the drill chuck. And really descriptive. So, he, you know, he explains, you know, the mechanism. And then he goes into details on how to disassemble it. This man's really put a lot of effort into this. Yes, he has. Okay, and what this guy's saying is, um, he's saying to make two plates. Because he said, he made them out of a 3 8 inch aluminum plate. And he says that the factory 
And he says the factory uses this type of plate one quarter inch thick. Okay, and what he's saying there is is okay where this chuck comes apart is this front part including the neural is called the hood and this hood unscrews from the body and where it unscrews is right here where the body meets the knurling I mean it doesn't look like it because you can't see uh, you know where you, you, you can't even notice that it's two separate parts it looks like one part but really does unscrew right there so what so what they say to do is is to make a plate and they want one of the plates to hold the body at this location right here you got that good plant yeah right there I did. okay yeah so they want you to hold the body right there okay then on the, they want you to make a second plate and they want you to hold it right here on the top neural okay they don't want you to hold it on the bottom part of the neural because that's where the threads are and they don't want you to put pressure on the threads so it's really important that you put the plate on the top half of the neural okay and so with the two plates you know so if you look at it here you know he demonstrates see where you'd put the bottom plate like in a vise and then the top uh, plate he uses a C clamp uh, to close it and then he's able to twist it off or turn it off okay and you know if we have to if I have to do, use this method then that's what I'll do you know whatever it takes to get this project done but you know I'm thinking about this and being that this little drill chuck so small I'm thinking about using a 5c collet block and um, I'm thinking using this for the body see and I got I got a collet that fits just perfectly right here on the body of the drill chuck so I would put this, I basically put the block in the vise and then tighten it up. And then I have a wrench. Did I bring it out here? No, I don't think I brought it out here. But basically it's a wrench that has nylon jaws. And I would use that for the neural uh, portion so it won't damage the chuck. And I'm hoping that I can use this and that the collet will um, provide enough pressure on the body to hold it in place. And it's just a right-handed thread. Hey, did anybody? Can I butt in? <laughs> oh yeah, anytime. Did anybody notice that he didn't ask me where the where the white nylon uh, jaw pliers are? You know why? Because <laughs> there's no whites for Lance. They won't. He, th those pliers are so far kept away from me because oh look, they won't mark anything. I'll just I grab on at any old pin I want, and pull it out of that <laughs> something or another. I don't and even it, know where it's yeah, at. That, he's hit him so well. <laughs> he can't. The, the, the master himself can't find him. Huh? Okay, I'm done. Sorry. So I'm going to try this first because if this works, two things. I won't have to make the plates. And plus, it's a lot easier. And, um, you know, there's a, there, I'll show it uh, maybe in, a, in the next video. This is actually the second smallest drill chuck that Albrecht makes. They make one smaller size, which is the 1 16th inch or 1.5 millimeter capacity drill chuck. And it's a cute little thing. And uh, we have them here, and so I'll show you. And I've got to rebuild those too because we got some new old stock uh, ones I purchased a while years ago, and they're just so stiff. Because again, you know, if you don't use them, the oils and grease in there just, just becomes dries like, up. like dry glue, right? Yeah. And yeah, you get, I mean, it, it, you have to really apply a lot of force to even turn it. So we have to rebuild some of those too. So it'd be really nice if this call it method works, and it just it just seems you know it'd be a cleaner way of doing it instead of having to make the plates so i'm going to give this i'll give this method a try first if this fails you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna force it i'm not gonna damage anything so if this fails i'll just go ahead and make the plates so and i'll be videoing this so you know whatever method i do use you'll see it so that's the next project so that's what i'm gonna work on next all right well that sounds really good thanks patrick for the update we'll sure. keep going bye bye Wow, we're out in the shop here to see Patrick. He's got some more uh, updates on the Albright chuck. Yes. Um, okay, as I explained in the prior scene, 
I'm gonna first try the collet block method because like I told you, I really don't want to make these plates unless I really have to. So, so um, I think I have everything here. Okay, I have my 5C collet block and the nut, the collet nut. I got the spanner wrench so I could tighten it up. I found <laughs> the nylon jawed uh, uh, wrench. Uh huh. And um, because this is really nice. See, these are nylon. I'll be using this at the knurled side, so there's no risk of damaging it. Now you're okay. seeing these as a viewer about as often as I do, so there they are. Look at them beauties. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so I think the first step is, let me first uh, find the collet. Okay, so let's see. I think that one's perfect. Okay. Okay. Let me just clean this really well. Oh, and just so you know, I did clean this really well with acetone. So all the grease and dirt and grime has all been all cleaned off externally. Because um, I, want, I want the maximum gripping uh, action that I can get. Okay, just clean the collet, make sure that's clean. And what brand of air gun is that nozzle there, Pat, in case somebody asked about that pretty blue gun that we have all over the house? <laughs> yeah, we use these everywhere. They're from SMC. Got that good? I do, yeah, I just want to share. It's a really nice gun. Yeah, these are really nice because you know, you buy these tips separately, and see, we use the one millimeter tip. Um, and it's just a standard we use because it still has some really good blow, but not too strong because, you know, we, we're always working on little tiny parts. And you know, you know, if we just had the regular blow gun, it'd blow the part all the way across the workshop. <laughs> so, <laughs> literally. Yeah, literally. So this is perfect, you know. Okay, let me, um, okay, I got the oil. Oh, let me get the uh, uh, vise set up. Okay, so these are the removable jaws for the vise because, um, you know, the, the jaws and the vise right now, you know, they're the neural, I guess, the flat neural. They're and, permanent mount. Yeah, permanent mount. And I don't want to damage this nice block. So the choices I have, I think I, I could either use rubber or leather. I think I'll use a leather. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are magnetic and they're very hard. <laughs> okay. I sure hope this method works, Lance, because I don't want to make a plate. <laughs> yeah, he's about ready to do anything but make those plates. They're not that hard to make. It's just that means we have to make them for each size we have, too, though. Right. We want to do other, right, the other chucks as well. But we have every size in the series there. Okay. Okay. And there's the collar block. The collar. Okay, first I'm gonna put it on this side just so I can tighten the collet nut. Okay, let me um I always just like to put a little coat of oil on the nut just so it because this is a side that you know tightens against the collet block. I just like to put a little layer of oil so it has better sliding action. Well, Lance, did I explain about uh, I decided to clamp on the larger step? No, I think you, you, you talked to me, but I don't think you've shared it on camera. Yeah, I think I messed... Uh, I forgot to mention that. Okay, in the instructions, the guy says when you make the plate, you want to make the plate to hold on this step on the bottom. Okay, not the step that turns, but this one in the middle right here. Okay, and the problem with that is because this drill chuck is so small, I don't think that's going to be enough gripping action. You know, the surface area, I think, is too small. It's going to slip. And I don't see no reason why you know, I can grab onto this larger step up here. 
you know, where the lettering's on. And I think, you know, it provides more surface area and it's gonna give us better gripping action. So that's what I've chosen to do. And like I told you, you know, I'm not gonna go crazy and tighten this thing, you know, with all my might. Uh, I don't wanna damage anything. Um, but, um, so let's see how it goes. But I just wanna mention that because I am doing it a little differently than the instructions say. Okay, so I'm just gonna go right up to the knurl, just leave about a one millimeter. Okay, um, let's give that a try. Yeah, I could, t I, could, I could tighten a little bit more if needed, but let's try that. Okay, so let's bring it up here. Okay. Let's make sure jaws are clean. Does everybody understand these? the reason we're working on this chuck and not just throwing away and putting another one isn't because it's some kind of vintage chuck, you can still buy it. It's just because it's kind of really expensive, right? Yeah, these are really expensive. And it's, you know, we have extras brand new in the box, but it, why when this is functionally still perfect condition? Um, Thanks. Okay, man. so remember, um, the instructions say to only grip the top half of the neural because the bottom half is where the threads are and obviously we don't want to squish and you know, put pressure where the threads are. Okay, so I'm just going to go on this, the top half. Okay, please don't slip. Okay, either, either it's slipping or it's the hood's turning. Hmm. <laughs> No, I think. Oh yeah, it's moving away from the from the inside chuck. I think we got great news. <laughs> I like great news. Let me. Okay. Oh yeah, look at that. Just like you said, uh, right there at the end of the neural, right there. That's where it opened. Oh yeah, see the and gap. There we go. See that gap there? Perfect. Yeah, it didn't have a gap. Now it has a gap. Remember, it looked like it wasn't going to be one piece. It's really two. There it is. Yeah, see, I can close it up. Oh, that is great news. So it worked. Okay, uh, really important. You don't want to open it like this uh, because there's ball bearings. A lot of ball bearings in here. And if I opened it up right now, all the ball bearings will fall out into the floor. So this is great. So we're done here. We're gonna take this, we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna put everything away. And I think, no, actually we still need everything to, uh, once you, I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna actually take this apart on the table. I'm gonna give it to Lance to do a thorough cleaning. And while he does that, I'm gonna hook up the electrical. Right oh, right. oh, to the tap, okay. And that right. gives me some uh, later in the afternoon therapy to do then. All right, I'm busy. <laughs> so this is good news. I think we're gonna be able to share a working tapping machine. Thanks, Patrick. Oh, thank you. Okay, hey, Patrick just wants us to give you one more. We're out in the uh, machine shop, and he just wants to give you a little quick update on the uh, chuck now that he wants to share with you, okay? Yeah, I just wanna show all the little pieces. See, these are the little, uh, the little jaws. And everything looks in really good condition. You, you, you usually can see the damage on the jaws, especially at the tips. But it's really good condition. Um, oh, one thing I want to mention. When you do, when, okay, I was really careful about disassembling this on, on the table. And one of the things I want to note is when, when you disassemble and take the hood off, you want to be sure the hood is facing up at all times. And the reason for that is I want to show this. You see in the body, around the body, there's all those little ball bearings. I got them right there. See that? They're see? all loose. Yeah, they're all loose. And if, so if you're, so if you have this upside down and you're taking it off, all those ball bearings are gonna drop. And especially, uh, you'll never find all of them. They're so tiny. Trust it, trust us on that as a small parts maker. <laughs> when they hit the floor, uh, they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. Yeah, so we just wanted to share that. And um, yeah, so the next time you see this, is it, it will be on the tapping machine. Well, we love it. Thanks a lot. I'll have this back to you when I'm done with it, Pat. Thank you. 
Oh boy. Okay, we're out here. That is a giant pout on Pat's face. And what's happened here is there is an update on the tapping machine, and unfortunately it is not good news. It is fixable news, but not good news. Let's get some explanation from Pat. Hi, Patrick. Hi, guys. Yeah, we're really devastated. We really are. You know, we were hoped this video was going to be the video that we were going to show the tapping finally. But we, I ran into a problem last night. You know, the last... The last video you saw was where I was able to take this apart, and that was really great. I mean, th that was wonderful news because that meant I, w I didn't have to machine a plate. So what happened is, so after that, you saw that video, you know, I gave the parts to Lance. Lance thoroughly cleaned all the parts. He, um, he went through all the parts, you know, he, he looked at them for wear, and he said, you said there was no wear, right, buddy? Oh, not not on those jaw, not on those jaw edges whatsoever. In fact, the when I was working on the light little, uh, uh, using the Scotch Brite on the just on the edges of them, th there's just no indication. It's just like sharp, like factory sharp. And uh, in sure. fact, is that's an awful nice finish I even put on the. Uh, I blued it at the end, guys. <laughs> I have I have all night to sit out there and enjoy making all these little parts for Patrick. So yeah, there were some marks and stuff on the call on the yeah, collar some and, neural stuff damage and, here. and stuff. Yeah, the neural. And not damage I did, you know, this is just from use. And yeah, he made it look like new again. And um, and yeah, and, I, and when I assembled this, the parts still look like new. So functionally, there's nothing wrong with the chuck actually. This, it's it's perfectly fine. It works actually. It's, uh, it's fully assembled and it's fully functional. Here's the problem though. So Lance finished this, gave me the parts last night. And last night, because I wanted to show you today this tapping machine in operation, I went ahead and worked on this all night, put it together, greased it, read the instructions, you know, made sure, you know, because this is, remember, this is my, the first time I've ever done this, uh, doing a rebuild in an Albrecht chuck. So, got it all together, and after it's together, it feels great, it feels smooth. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the chuck. But the problem is, is it spins too freely. You know, anybody that's used an Albrecht chalk like this, they know that feel. They know that, that resistance it has, where it has, you know, a nice fresh grease. And it just, like here, I even uh, pulled a new, this is a brand new Albrecht chalk. Can, can I make a funny, can we, can we call that uh, money resistance based on their price tags? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's a value added re resistance. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and this is actually a pretty newly manufactured chuck. One of the things you can tell that's different is uh, in the newer chucks, they actually balance the collars. This is the collar right here. And you can see the holes that are drilled where they balance. Uh, the, uh, we're here on the older one. You can see even on the older one, they actually block in the collar where they don't do that today. So that, that's one of the, so two differences is uh, they now don't block in it and they also, but they balance it. So that's unique. Okay, but, so I got this from our stock. It's brand, you know, it's brand new, never been used, uh, recent manufactured, not too long ago. And it just has that nice feel. You know, when you turn this, it has that, you just feel, it just feels precision, just feels, you know, like it should. Anybody that's used one of these Albrecht chucks knows that feel. Okay, and you know, since I got this one, I went ahead and I want I pulled uh, one of our smaller ones. Oh, look at the <laughs> little baby. Okay. We don't get to use it on this machine though, because the capacity issue. But right. Yeah. Oh. And just so you know, this is the smallest model that Albrecht makes, and this has half the capacity as of this one. This is a one six. No, I'm sorry. This is a one eighth inch capacity or three millimeter, and this is a one sixteenth inch or one point five millimeter capacity. But it's it's just tiny. So I just <laughs> wanted to show you guys. But that's the smallest one they make. And you know, just like all the others, it just has that nice feel. Okay. So anyway, so I was really disappointed because uh, I wanted to show you. Um, Last night when I did the reassembly, I even downloaded the instructions from Albrecht on how to disassemble and reassemble the chuck. And they even tell you, I just want to read the line. So they tell you, put a lot of grease on the balls 
but only a little grease on the guides. Okay, and what they're talking about is, see, those are the ball bearings right there. So they want you, and remember, I measured these ball bearings on our chuck, and these are little tiny uh, two millimeter size ball bearings. So you're talking really small. I mean, there's only so much grease you can since put I on Since I cleaned these. it, I know there's 25 of them. Right, and that's another... Little bouncing balls. <laughs> right, that's an, another interesting thing is uh, every size chuck that Albrecht makes has 25 ball bearings. But different sizes, of course. But it's interesting that they have the same number uh, of, of bearings in each chuck. So, yeah, a total of 25. So, yeah, so they, they tell you, to, you know, apply a lot of grease on the ball bearings. And then on the, um, you know, on the guy, the, the guys that the bearings run on. And what's really interesting is uh, they don't want you to put any grease whatsoever on any of the other components. Uh, they actually tell you, you know... Uh, to ensure that it op uh, functions properly, you don't want to uh, grease any other part. They don't even want you to oil this, uh, the little shaft that's uh, left-handed threaded. So, yeah, so it's really interesting. So, you know, I followed, followed the instructions to a T, and it's just loose. And then I, we also, you know, um, some of you may be wondering what grease we used. I used a grease called Magna Lube G. And it's a PTFE grease, and it, it's a it's a grease I've been using for years, and I use it on so many things successfully. And in regards to consistency, this grease has an an NLGI number of two, okay. And a number two is your common grease. I mean, any grease you likely would buy, like your lithium greases. Um, that you buy your uh, auto, you know, basically anything, uh, any place, likely to get a number two. So it's not like I use the grease that has a lower number that's a very soft type of grease. So, yes, I don't, um, the only conclusion I could come up with is that there's not enough grease in here. It has to be. So how much grease are you supposed to put? I don't know. So what I decided to do is, since I have a brand new chuck that's never been used, um, as as a as a part of our video for next week, I'm gonna uh, disassemble this new chuck, and we're gonna see how much grease they put in from the manufacturer in here, and it's gonna be really interesting because when I actually took this one apart, okay, remember this has been this is this is pretty old. And it's been used, and I don't know if it's been rebuilt from the past by somebody else. But there was a lot of grease. You know, like they tell you in the instructions, only grease the ball bearings and the guides. Well, there was grease everywhere. There was grease, I mean, every component. You want to say something, Lance? Yeah, you had him over here jumping up and down. <laughs> so get bat nerves. Um, no, you know, since we've been operating it for... I don't know. We've had it at least a decade and a half. I know yeah. that for sure. I'm not sure we had it the full two decades we've been doing this, but somewhere in there because we picked it up pretty good deal. Um, we've never put any grease, so let's just eliminate. Right. Let's just eliminate that right now. I mean, so so that's yeah. been in, that, something else has been in there. You know. Yeah. So when 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 I disassembled this initially, you know, I'm like, guy, there's grease everywhere, and but the instructions from the manufacturer tell you you should only. You should only put grease on the ball bearings. So I, so I was suspicious. Well, you know, I shouldn't follow what I saw on this chuck because somebody probably rebuilt this from the past and they just packed it with grease. So I, that's why I followed the instructions. But obviously it's too loose and I'm just not happy with it. So, so that's what we're going to do. Um, it's going to be a short little segment for next week because all I'm going to do is you know, now that I know how to disassemble these pretty quick with our um, 5C collet block, I'm gonna so I'm gonna disassemble this and I'm gonna film it and show you guys. So you guys are gonna see it with me. Uh, we're gonna see. It's gonna be really interesting. I'm really curious to see if we're gonna find two things: the amount of grease they put on the ball bearings, and to see if they really do put grease on other components. You know, they tell you in the instructions one thing, but do they really do something else, you know, in, in the assembly process? So that'll be pretty interesting. And then and then basically what we learned from this chuck, I'm going to basically copy it. 
and we should be able to replicate the consistency I'm looking for and you know that we would expect from an Albert Chuck. Does does that mean that, that we'll be able to show the, the tapping next week then? Oh absolutely. Okay. This is the only thing holding us up, just this chuck. So and this is gonna be I mean this is really quick. This is less than a day, you know. So once this is done, we're happy with it, we're gonna install it. And that's the other thing is by waiting to you know, there's going to be the little switch box that gets installed right here. Because, see, I have the, uh, I actually made up this cable already because I was going to, you know, wire it temporarily. But I'm going to hold off on that. And if we get the switch box next week, which we should, I'll permanently wire it. I'll wire so, it once it be done. Yeah, and be done. So when we demonstrate it, we'll demonstrate it and it'll be completed. Oh, great. Thanks, so, Patrick. Yeah, sorry, guys, but give us one more week. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you leave us one of those comments, maybe we have something we can answer. We will never leave a question unanswered. Thank you.